Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond. Welcome you back to the world of Pokemon Delta Emerald. In the last episode, we went through the Aqua Base once again to meet up with Archie after such a long time, and we had a nice, meaningful conversation with him, I think, something like that. In this episode, we are headed back to the Space Center to discuss the plan now that we uh, know what Zinnia is up to and all that jazz. And I like that cool little camera angle. That was kind of cool and stuff. Head up there into the Space Center. And head up to the second floor of the Space Center and find some other sentence that would require me to say the word Space Center again. Let's talk to Steven. Jeffrey, I've been expecting you. As he was like, oh my god, it's amazing that your timing is so great, all that jazz or whatever. Ah, oh, that's it. That woman, that Zinnia, she mentioned the Sky Tower. If you can enter it, only the successors of the ancient world who know of what has been. The lore keepers who are tasked with passing on that knowledge to those who come after. Do you remember Wallace, whom you met in Sutopolis? Uh, nope, can't say that I do. Is that right? That's rather sad for Wallace. <laughs> I like that line. He just doesn't get it. The gym leader of Sutopolis, Wallace, should know how to undo the seal of the Sky co Column's entrance. He is also one of the few humans who have inherited such an ancient lore. I will remain here and work with the professor and his team to devise a plan for what to do next. That woman, Zinnia, I cannot put my faith in her. We will think of a new way to stop the meteoroid on our own. Zinnia and the Sky Column, I will leave them in your hands. I will send a message to Wallace for you, so he knows to help. You will probably find him in the Cave of Origin in Sutopolis. Oh, but it's so far away, bruh. Can I just get a teleporter? Uh, whatever. So we just gotta head on now. It's just a big old fetch quest and stuff. I know I've been complaining like, about, about the story and stuff, but I do like the personality of it. And I don't know if I mentioned this at all, but if you want a Pokemon game that has like a really good after story, X and Y surprisingly has a phenomenal one. It is really stinking good, and I immensely recommend it if you haven't experienced it. Like, I would go as far as to say it's the best story of any Pokemon game. Just that little mini story that happens at the end of X and Y. It is really stinking amazing. I wish it was more well known. I wish it got some sort of representation in the anime, but unfortunately it didn't for whatever reason. Uh, it said Sutopolis, right? Uh, Cave of Origin, so yep, there we go. We're just going to fly over there. I know uh, it did get mentioned in one of the Pokemon Origins uh, episodes, which is a really cool little series of things, but I don't know. It just It's so much more deserving of like content than just that one little episode uh but yeah here we are back in here uh if we could find our way around i know it's like a big old pile of pathways this place is uh so we're just in a dead end it's, i probably need to go and use surf somewhere this place is easier to navigate when it was all flooded i didn't have to walk anywhere just surfed everywhere uh just jump up on this thing with our good old happy whale and hopefully we won't run into wild pokemon here here's the gym but uh, guess we can't go over there. I should probably do this then. Ooh, I'm a happy whale. Go to this side. This is classic commentary, I'm sure of it. Uh, Cave of Origin, where art thou? Are you across this bridge? Ooh, we got a little cutscene. Oh, yes, indeed. Here's Wallace, our good old Wally Poo. What a glorious turn of events. Is it really? Oh, ho, 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 it really is. To think that this tree, I never knew we had received it from that huge man who visited from the Kalos region. Goodness me, old master. This has been a learning experience. I thank you for this. Oh, ho, ho, you're too kind, Master Wallace. Oh ho 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 ho, what is with all these people saying oh ho 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 ho? Oh no, you're too modest, ha ha ha, oh they caught on to me. Now then. Welcome again to Sutopolis, our new champion Jeffrey. Steven has told me everything. Do you wish to go to the Sky Column? It is true that the cave that leads to the Sky Column can only be opened by the hand of someone descended from the ancient people of Sutopolis. As indeed I am I! War by one of the Draconoids who have also lived in the Hoenn region since ancient times. 
The Sky Tower is in fact an altar built to the for the ascension of Rayquaza, that legendary Pokemon long said to be the protector of the Hoenn region. Only then the can the ancient Pokemon or ain't what what but 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 only the ancient Dragonoid people know how to summon Rayquaza to the Sky Column. Steven has told me of the woman Zinnia. She must be trying to revive Rayquaza for some purpose. I shall go to the Sky Tower. When your preparations are complete, come join me. The Sky Column of towers over everything upon one of Route 131's small islands. So, to make things a bit easier to locate it, I think I will go ahead and use the, not the Aqua Suit, the Eon Flute, so we can actually see the tower from above. Just fly on up here. Excelsior! And we're fabulous. Now, question is, where the heck is Route 131? Just look for a big old tower. It should be somewhat easy to locate, maybe. Uh, I'm trying to remember, is like, is it the same place where we caught Rayquaza in the first game? Or in Emerald or whatever? Because that was like, not over here, but somewhere. Some sort of tower. Looking for a tower. You'd think it would be easy to find, but probably not. Well, he said one of the small islands, so I should probably head down here, maybe, possibly. We got that, we got... Just give me a number. Give me a sign! We got... Whoa, whoa. What number was that route? Evergrand City, yeah, but... What about a route number? Just give me a route number, god darn it. 127, okay. Uh, we got 126, 124. So it's like down here somewhere? I don't know. 128? Uh, let's see. Come on. Give it to me. Uh, what's that shiny thing down there? That looks cool. Can I land there? I can land there. Uh, Mirage Island. I honestly have no idea what's here. I, it's probably not what we need to do, but it was shiny, so I want it. The crazy if Latios was here and I actually get the second one. Uh, Mirage Island. We get something here, apparently. Audino. Okay. So it's a place I haven't been to before because it has Gen 5 Pokemon. Uh, Audino is actually a really good Pokemon for experience, so if you find them, you could just fight it, just get a lot of experience. But up here is... Oh. We do have Rock Smash with us, so we can go ahead and get this TM. Maybe it's super useful, who knows. Uh, we got ourselves TM90 Substitute. Uh, not that great. It's a TM nonetheless, very good for competitive play. Uh, I guess we'll walk around, maybe? Can't even examine that. Huh. There's nothing here but the team for substitute. We could break this boulder and examine that rock, I guess. Not sure why I would want to do that, though. It Hello, there's a Pokemon inside the rock! It's... a Graveler! Okay. Uh, it would be really awkward if it actually was the Graveler and we just, like, obliterated him or something like that, but nah. Run away. And examine this rock. Nothing here, okay. Yeah, we was talking about with the large man and stuff. That is reminiscent of another Pokemon game. I guess I won't spoil it because A, I haven't played it on the channel, and B, maybe you haven't played it yourself yet, so not entirely a good time to do that. And let me just say, I hate what they did with Zatu's sprite in the 3D games. Like, why is he just, like, perpetually floating in midair? It looks so sick and creepy. Like, it made more sense if he was just standing to, like, a wise old man or something. But no, he's just like, oh, God, just looks so sick and weird. I don't know why they did that to you, to you Zatu. And we get another wild encounter. Great. Is there really nothing here? Or maybe I should have examined the stinking volcano. I'm going to use the stinking repel after this. And I'll fight this Audino just for the heck of it. I take it back. I'm not doing this fight. I know how annoying infatuation is. Uh, let's go ahead and use a repel if we have one. And let's just explore this place real quick. Can't actually examine that. Can we break this rock? I'm trying to understand what the whole point of this place is. I'm sure there's like oh old old amber. Oh, that's interesting. You could. Go ahead and bring that to a a guy. 
I believe the guy in Devon Corporation accepts the fossils, and if you give them to him, he'll restore it. That could be turned into the Pokemon Aerodactyl. I guess that's what this place is for. Maybe like for some sort of extra event, you could find another Pokemon here. I'm not entirely sure, but I guess that's all we can do here. Just a couple rocks for us to break and nothing else really. I guess that's it. Can't actually surf anywhere, can't check the volcano. So, I guess we'll be on our merry way. Did not mean to examine that, but it was cool to see all our gym badges in 3D and all full color. I uh, should probably just go ahead and fly, because I cannot find where this place is supposed to be. It was a cool little detour, though. Why not? Have I never been to Pacific Log Town? Wow, I really just gave up on... I just did the bare minimum, I guess, when recording this. So, looks like I got some backtracking to do. Hopefully I don't run into too many trainers along the way, but I guess that explains why I couldn't land there. So, I'm gonna go to Pacific... I'm gonna go ahead and just cut away to when I re reach Route 131, but yeah, I guess you knew I actually have to go there when playing the game, so... Uh, cutting away. Wish me luck on not running into too many, uh, random trainers on the high seas on the way there. What does this say? to know. Alright, we're on the, we're on the right track at least. I'm not actually going to go visit Pacific Log Town because that is not on our list of things to do. Though I guess if I really wanted to fill out the map then I could. Maybe I'll do it on my own personal time. But for now, we have arrived. I just realized I really hope I don't actually need the mock bike. So you come, Jeffrey. Oh wait, didn't you get combined into one bike in this game? As you can see, I have undone the seal on the entrance of t uh, the Sky Tower. Follow the path within, and you will reach the <laughs> column in time. However, to go beyond this point, there is one more trial you must overcome. That is my duty as one of the ancient so- oh, That's an ancient sociopaths. Ancient Sutopolidians, a duty passed down to me by my former master. You must battle me, here and now. Prove to me that your power is great enough to face what lies ahead. Now tell me, are you prepared? Sure. Then let's begin. Champion of Hoenn. You, who should exhibit the most graceful of arts in the battle of your Pokémon, I would have you show me your true strength. We gotta fight Wallace again, as if we didn't fight him a million times already. We fought him, well I guess we fought him in an alternate dimension that you didn't see already, because he was the 8th gym leader normally in Ruby and Sapphire, but in Emerald he was actually the champion, so we already showed off that fight, but now we're showing off another fight with him, because you can't get enough Wallace in this game apparently. So I'm just going to go ahead and use Mega Evolution right off the bat, and start, it off, start things off with a Shadow Claw. Uh, pretty sure he also has a... No, like if he had a Mega Evolution on his team, then he would probably have had it stolen already by Zinnia, so maybe he doesn't have a Mega Evolved Pokemon. Maybe this is just like the champion fight from Emerald that you didn't get to see, but they're just adding it in now. Oh, wow, that's very weak damage. Going to go ahead and use Shadow Claw again. I just switch to Shriko and have him decimate literally every single one of his Pokemon. Get that level up, Salabi. And up next is... Oh wait, no, Swallow got a level up. Very cool. Tentacruel, speaking of cool. Uh, Trico actually won't be that great for it because it's a uh, water poison type. So... I guess we'll stick with Salabi for now. Uh, let's go and use Shadow Claw. Uh, using Rain Dance that makes electric attacks, or Thunder more specifically, more accurate, but unfortunately we don't have that on our side, so we can't really benefit from it. But we do get more powerful water attacks, weaker fire attacks. <clears throat> I don't know why you need me to explain all this to you, I also don't know why my voice is disappearing. And, uh, the one thing I don't like about the new generation is that Salabi doesn't have, uh, he now has a weakness, he's weak to fairy type attacks, which is kind of lame, but oh well. Uh, not too terrible, because we're still, uh, kicking just fine. Milotic is up next, a very beautiful Pokemon. But yeah, Fairy-type made it so uh, Salabi and Spiritomb no longer are the only Pokemon without weaknesses. I think now the only Pokemon without weaknesses is Electric and Electros because it's an Electric-type that has Levitate for its ability, so uh, it has no weakness because of that because it's only weak to ground attacks, but it's immune to it that way. I'm uh, gonna use Energy Ball. Uh, Rain doesn't really affect Grass-type attacks in any way aside from, I think it makes Solar Beam a bit weaker? I might be wrong on that, though. Uh, let's go ahead and use Energy Ball. I know it makes Sunlight and Moonlight uh, weaker because you don't get... Uh, the sky is all covered up, so you don't get 
as much energy from the sun and moon. Uh, up next is Ludicolo, buddy! Unfortunately, I've not used my Mirror B, so I don't really care. I'm gonna switch to Swellow, however. And we'll make quick work of it, thanks to the fact that we have a flying type on our side. And look how slow this animation is. Like, it just takes all the fun out of the Ludicolo animation because, like, it was just so happy pappy and super quick when in Coliseum and XD, but they just slowed it down so it's much so it's, like, not nearly as funny. I'm gonna use Air Slash. Air Slash. And, okay. Oh, Ice Beam, of course, he has that attack. Cover himself from Ice Types. Okay, the rain stopped. Very good. Use Air Slash one more time. Finish the job. And we're good. Ludicolo fainted. Get that experience. And up next, he's got a Gyarados. Of course he does. Oh, God. Oh, my God. I literally just got a flashback of the fight with Wallace, and it was stinking. It was a nightmare. A lot more of a nightmare than I thought it was going to be. And that Gyarados, man, that was insane. Uh, it's a... Water flying type, but I doubt it has any flying type moves, so we're just gonna switch to Hariyama. Go to Hariyama. Let's do this. Gyarados, he's got a crazy attack. Bar. Oh, I forgot about the Intimidate. God darn it. Hariyama, when we ever stop getting messed up with that. There's some waterfall. Playing hide and seek in the waterfalls. Speaking of that, I actually haven't played Life of Streams 2 yet. Like, is it any good? There's that I was so immensely disappointed with Before the Storm that, like, I just didn't even want to bother with uh, Life of Streams 2. And, like, it doesn't even have any of the characters I'm attached to, so why do I even bother? That's my question. Uh, I don't know. I'll probably play it eventually, uh, but considering the fact that I haven't really bothered to play it yet so far, I might just wait until the game's fully released. Because, like, that's just the thing with episodic games. If you could, if you're willing to wait it out to where you're not playing it along with everyone else when it's getting first released they go on discounts immediately after getting fully released so just wait a little bit or i guess a lot of it because like it takes a year or so for it to get released but it's so easy to wait for a discount for those things like it's big discounts because they're story driven games like the fact that story driven people are like oh everyone knows the story right so the, uh, i guess there's no point in, like keeping it in full price anymore so they get discounted so stinking quickly so just wait it out if you're not really into those games but you're somewhat interested in them because they go discounted really quickly Pretty sure like the first three episodes of The Walking Dead Season 1 are free on PS3 if you want to go and get those. And I think episode 1 of Life is Strange is always free for whatever reason, but whatever. Uh, next is Wish Cash. Gonna switch to Trico. Wa uh, water ground type, so it'll be very, very easy to get all of our HP back with Giga Drain. And let's see what we do. I like how it always just had a W on it, so it's like, I'm Wish Cash. I have a W on my head because I'm Wish Cash. So, yeah, it's just one of those really weird designs for a Pokemon that uh, I thought was always super uncreative. Like, the rest of the Pokemon's fine, just the W is just really stinking awkward. And that was it for Wallace. Very easy compared to the fight in Emerald. To defeat me, a descendant of the ancient Zootopolis people, and even when I was holding nothing back, we received 6,840 Pokemon. As I have come to expect from you, Jeffrey. You are an excellent Pokemon trainer. The Pokemon that you sent out into that battle, at times dancing as lightly as an elusive spring breeze, yet striking with the sudden surely surety of lightning from the blue. Watching you command the battle with such ease and grace, even I might succumb to your charm. Now go forth, find the truth that you seek. As one of the ancient people of the Sutopolis, I cannot include. I cannot intrude upon this holy place. I will return to Sutopolis for now and try to lay plans in case the worst should come to pass despite all of our efforts. I'm sorry that we are always seem to be leaving the fate of the world in your hands, yet there lies in you once again. Good luck to you, young champion. Because you're one of the ancient people, ancient descendants of this ancient place, you're not allowed to visit the ancient place. That makes sense. But yes, we have made it to the Sky Tower once again. I hope we have the right bicycle, or the bicycles were combined in one. I think they were combined into one. That sounds a lot more familiar. But, we'll just have to wait and see, I guess. Not entirely sure if you could... Hello. Not sure if you could come here before this point in this game, or if it gets blocked off to you or not. But, regardless, this is when we need to be here. So you came for me. Thanks for that. 
on a little clapping animation. That's really good, Jeffrey. I really feel it right here. Mm-hmm. Since you've been a good boy, I think I'll give you something I've been keeping. Look. The paintings that cover the walls of this tower. See, these are the history of humanity, of Pokémon, and of nature itself. They are the tales that have been passed down by my ancestors, the Draconoids, for thousands of years. And now, I will pass that history and lore on to you. Thousands of years ago, the four nations looked I mean, in the primal age long lost, the world was overflowing with natural energy. Primal Groudon and Primal Kyogre fought over the energy in endless furious clashes. In the face of Primal Groudon and Kyogre's great power, people could do nothing. The only choice was to watch as disaster upon disaster swept over them. It was in such time that a great many meteoroids poured from the darkness of space from a place higher even than the heavens. And the meteoroids fell into their multitude upon a waterfall that had long been home to a tribe of dragon-type Pokémon users. Okay, that's it. That's the end of the first chapter of my tale. I'll tell you the next part of the story on the next floor. Look forward to it! Bit by bit, we're going to learn more of this story. I don't know if wild Pokemon appear here. Well, I guess we'll find out. Oh, I also don't know if there are any items. We'll just look around a little bit. Uh, the layout's a lot different than it was in uh, the original game, that's for sure. Dragon Scale. Believe that powers of dragon type moves. Simple as that. Though it might be useful for something more. Let's check, actually. Instead of just speculating. Uh, dragon Scale. Uh, dragon Type Pokemon may be holding this. Very tough and inflexible scale. Dragon Type Pokemon may be holding this item when caught. But what does it do exactly? Oh, wait! The Dragon Scale! No, this could be used to evolve a Seedra into a Kingdra. I believe you also need to trade it at the same time, like a trade while holding this item to have it evolve, so. Uh, that's what you need to use it for, I just remembered. Uh, in case she doesn't heal us, this, these trainers do have a tendency to heal you on their own, so I probably don't need to be healing my Pokemon myself, but uh, I'll take care of my own Pokemon. It seems like the right thing to do. And there you go. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and exit out. Switch around the Pokemon. You can actually use the touch screen to just plop and drop them super quickly, which is really cool. And, uh, there you go. Classic order. Perfect balance, just as all things should be. Climb on down this ladder. And there are wild Pokemon here, so I'm gonna set up a repel, because it's gonna be very awkward to ruin the dramatic tension over and over. Got some max repels with me, so I might as well use them. We are reaching the end of our adventure, after all. Kim went so fast. Let's head on up here. Ooh, dramatic camera angle. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is progress. I thought it wasn't progress. Oh, here you are. Let me continue. I see you, TM. It's finally time for chapter two. Here we go. <laughs> that Pokemon right there just ruined the attention. At last, right? Huh, I know you're thrilled. The meteors shone with a rainbow brilliance as if some great life was held within. That was then, as if drawn by brilliance, a Pokemon that shone in a blazing emerald hue descended from the heavens. That Pokemon was none other than Rayquaza. Rayquaza's power overwhelmed that of the two primal Pokemon, and peace returned to the world. The people of Hoenn revered Rayquaza as a true savior. A thousand years passed, and my brother and I discovered, I mean, a thousand years after this time, the meteoroids once again fell. A huge meteoroid, far greater than any before, struck the planet, boring deep into this ocean, and leaving behind a, in a crater larger than any other. The land born of this event was later become known as Sutopolis. And that's it! Chapter 2 is over! But we've only just left time. We've only just left the starting line. There's a long way yet. Don't fall behind now. Hey, you ran into wild Pokemon. Why don't you go and fight it? Eh, whatever. 
Uh, if we head up here, though, just want to check out all the branching paths. Wait, no, 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 no. Clammy, 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 clam. Uh, that was the other left. Okay, that's where we were before. My bad. Okay, there's only one pathway after all. Climb on up here. Oh, no dramatic camera angle this time. How lame. This isn't sturdy. Now our tail reaches the best part. Breaks the bridge. Plutopolis was born from a great meteor's meteoroid strike. Plutopolis was born from a great meteoroid strike. The great meteoroid was the first of many disasters to befall humanity. When it punched into the planet, the land cracked beneath it, and a great welling of natural energy poured from beneath Hoenn. Thirsting for that energy, Primal Kyogre and Primal Groudon once again woke. The people had a wish, a memory from a thousand years before. They wished that the legendary Pokemon clad in emerald light would appear again. The huge meteoroid that huge meteorite that laid at the heart of the Sutopolis gave off a boundless brilliance. In its brilliance it resembled a vast and powerful keystone. And once again, Rayquaza descended from whence it came in the heavens. The people fell to their knees before Rayquaza and made a wish for salvation. And as they did, a great change came over the legendary Pokémon. It was enveloped in blinding light. As the light receded, they beheld a Rayquaza beyond all knowledge. A sublime figure, incandescent with overwhelming life force. It was humanity's wish that brought about Rayquaza's transformation in the face of the Rainbow Stone. Yes, a wish, an intangible thing, invisible to the eye. Yes, this wish bound people and Pokémon together, enabling the legendary Pokémon to change its appearance. Doesn't it remind you of something? That's right, it sounds like Mega Evolution, doesn't it? Keep heading upward. Man, this music is just really cool and stuff. I really enjoy it a lot more than the other romp that played in this place before. I also just enjoy the fact that it isn't the same layout as before because that was really annoying way back in the day. But we don't have to worry about that this time. You may be able to piece together where everything that she's saying and like what it's all going to lead up to. And how did the story end? After being transformed by the wish of the people... Did Rayquaza save them from disaster? Rayquaza once again confronted Primal Groudon and Primal Kyogre. The golden filaments that sprang from its body covered the sky. An emerald brilliance illuminated the area. A terrible wind rose. The wind and emerald light visibly sapped the power from Primal Groudon and Primal Kyogre. Drained of their primal powers, the two vanished into the depths of land and sea. Rayquaza watched them go, regaining its usual appearance. Then it soared back up into the heavens where it dwelled. A witness to the series of events, a tall visitor from a distant land said, It is the Delta, born of the great disturbances of this world. By the bonds of born men... By the bonds born of mankind's wish and the power of the stones, it will calm the troubles that plague the world. That was when the Draconoids constructed their great tower to hold this rainbow stone that had granted Rayquaza its power, and to try to get a little bit closer to Rayquaza in the heavens above. To record the history of their trials and the great feats of mighty Rayquaza for all to know, they left behind the murals you see here. A giant tower and paintings of the past. You know, I feel like I've seen something like that recently. Eh, but now I suppose it's time for the last chapter in our tale. Keep heading up. I wanted to get that TM from before. Hope we could find it somehow. Uh, let's see. Is there any way to get around there? No, there's not. At last, we reach our final chapter. 
A thousand years of peace followed after that disastrous time. But the Draconoid people, learning from their long history's cynical nature, foretold the, the meteoroids would fall on this land once again. The meteoroid to come, they prophesized, would be far greater than the one that they had come before it. The meteoroid would be greater, great enough to break the world forever, as opposed to breaking it temporarily. In order to prevent this great calamity, those who held the knowledge of this past arrived at a plan. Their plan was to invoke Rayquaza, the great survivor, the great savior, and summon it to this land before the meteoroid could strike. And that's it. That's the end of our tale of the Dragonoid's Tale. I spent a long time thinking about how I could protect the happiness of, of as many people as possible. What? Oh god, sneezing time. It's gone. What I must do as one who holds both the knowledge and the power, one who bears the heavy wishes of those who cannot live up to this fate, to that fate, well, I had to be really creative, you know? Eh, that's one way of putting it, I guess. Not really sure if this is the greatest of tales. Like, it's just really far-fetched, like, throwing you out of nowhere and stuff. It's kind of awkward and weird, but... I don't know, it, it's... My main interest in all of this is just the fact that it connects several Pokemon games to one another. And also the remakes, it makes them seem a lot grander than they are. And it's CM64 Explosion, which none of my Pokemon could probably learn. So that's kind of lame. I was thinking it was going to be a dragon type move because it's the Sky Tower, but no, it was Explosion. Whatever, it's the most powerful move in existence, but you sacrifice your own Pokemon at the, in the process. Just keep on climbing up here. And see what lies at the top of this legendary tower. See that, Aster? You always wanted to watch them, right? The little, the little annoyeds. The million glittering stars falling from the sky. The show is about to start. Aren't we happy now? Yes, what could be better, dear Aster? <laughs> Welcome to the Dragon Hark Altar. Jeffrey, you know what I'm trying to do here by now, don't you? That's right. I will summon Rayquaza to this world to destroy the meteoroid headed for Hoenn. That is my... It is our duty. Ever since I was a little girl, I have always turned my eyes up to the sky when I was so full of uncertainty that I felt my heart might be crushed by it. When I was so grief-stricken and alone, I thought my heart might break of it. I turned and looked up there so that my tears would never, ever fall. What about you? Have you ever had to do something like that? A lot more in recent times, that's for sure, but... I most certainly have. Right. I used to watch the stars like this all the time. Together with Aster. We were always together, in good times and in bad. I loved her. I loved her with everything I had. But I still lost her. <laughs> I want to see her. I want to be with her again. My sweet Aster. I will, won't I? With this, just a little longer. <laughs> 